A few days ago, we made a video talking about how Jack Quinn out of the Buffalo Sabre system is proving people wrong. This is mostly because back when he was drafted in the 2020 NHL entry draft, there were some people, myself included, that kind of thought that he was drafted a bit too early. Well, today we're going over to Buffalo once again, and we're making yet another video about a guy in their system that is in some form or another proving us wrong. And I know this is not as quote-unquote egregious as the other draft pick was for Jack Quinn, but today we're going over to the 2019 NHL Entry Draft. We're going over to the Buffalo Sabres and their seventh overall selection, and we're talking about the workhorse from Whitehorse, Mr. Dylan freaking Cousins himself. We've already made one video going over Cousins, and I believe that was like a year ago, maybe it was a few months ago, something like that, just talking about how he's supposed to be the next one. And I'm going to be honest, when I made that video, I was just kind of saying, you know, when it comes to the potential, when it comes to what he could be, Dylan Cousins is a guy that could become absolutely great. But in my heart of hearts, I did not think it would be coming this soon. Because Dylan Cousins, right now, as a 6'3", 187 right-handed center, playing for the Buffalo Sabres, is an absolute stud. Drafted initially in the 7th overall spot, as we had said, and despite the fact that he was ranked to go somewhere in, let's say, this territory, you know, Elite Prospects had him at 7, ISS at 5, Future Considerations had him at 10, McKean's at 5, McKenzie at 6... I kind of thought back in this 2019 draft period that Dylan Cousins, at least in my opinion, wasn't really the guy that I would have taken at 7th overall. You had Zegras available on the board, you had Caulfield also there, Boldy was also an option. I kind of felt like I would have had these guys over Cousins just because of my own personal preference, but Dylan Cousins, of course, getting taken where he was, I mean, he was a good player, and especially in the WHL, you take a look at his profile in that season, he had... 84 points in 68 games played. He was an absolute workhorse. It's why he got the nickname. He worked really hard. He had such good puck skills. He forced things to happen out there on the ice. And as a result, he got taken seventh overall. And the next few years, you sort of saw Dylan Cousins' development going in a pretty steady pace. The season after, he was the captain for Lethbridge. He had 85 points in 51 games played, was an absolute superstar for Team Canada at the World Juniors, and then he upped the ante even further in 2020-2021. He had 13 points in 41 games played for the Sabres in the shortened 56-game campaign, which wasn't great, but then again, I mean, he's a rookie. He's playing in an NHL system that isn't really all too great either in Buffalo. He had a crazy World Juniors that season, though, posting up 16 points in seven games played. He was neck and neck with Trevor Zegras for being the top scorer in that year's tournament. It was a crazy watch, and I remember just all the games and everybody posting the points and how historical the production numbers at that tournament was. And then last season, you had yourselves a 38-point campaign in 79 games for Cousins and 13 points in 10 games for Team Canada at the World Championships. This season, though, Dylan Cousins has been on an absolute heater. As in 27 games played, the guy has 10 goals, 17 assists, for 27 total points. He is on pace for an 82-point year and 30 goals, and in fact... Sure, it's easy to say, wow, point per game, that's crazy, he's a point per game player, that's so good, right? But then you have to acknowledge just where these points are coming from, because at the start of the season, Dylan Cousins was not necessarily a point per game player, he had a few pointless games thrown in there, he was getting a point roughly every two to three games or so, he'd have some stints where he would post two game point streaks, for example, but things really started to heat up let's say two weeks-ish ago, because back on December 5th, you had yourselves Dylan Cousins, who was named the second star of the week in the National Hockey League. This is because in that week, in the four-game sample Cousins had, he had four goals and five assists for nine total points. He was right up there with McDavid and Robertson as being named one of the top stars, and you go back to the most recent stint that Cousins had, 
Sure, the guy didn't score a point in the game against Pittsburgh yesterday, the 4-3 overtime loss. But if you go to the most recent five games before that loss, he had one goal in the Tampa Bay game where they lost in overtime, two goals against the Red Wings where they won in the shootout, a goal and two assists in their 6-4 loss against the Avalanche, three assists against the San Jose Sharks, and a goal and two assists again against Columbus in that crazy 9-4 win. That is, what is that, 3, 6, 9, 12 points in five games, and if you isolate just the December games, nine points in three games played. Dylan Cousins is starting to play in the NHL in the same way he was in the WHL and at the World Juniors where his play is just so dominant. He's able to snipe goals, he's able to will goals, and his workhorse-like quality is really showcasing him off to being a leader at this level despite only being 21 years old. Here's a tweet made by Andy and Rono. They have hockey data charts that they like to post on Twitter. It's really good. I like the advanced analytical profiles that they're able to showcase. Glazers out asked them for a player profile card on Dylan Cousins, and AR says, hey, that's an excellent choice. We've always liked Dylan Cousins, and he's been amazing so far this season. He has the potential to be a franchise player in Buffalo in our eyes. And you can see that his wins above replacement number is 95, meaning that he is in the top 5 percentile of NHL players this season. In fact, if you take a look at his offense and transition metrics, the lowest statistical quality of his game is his shooting, which is actually just slightly above average, being in the 54 percentile range. Other stats include offensive impact, he's in the top 4%, point production, top 4%, passing, top 14%, he is a crazy good player. And with players like these, you have the Tage Thompsons of the world, he's got 40 points on the year. How crazy is that? You have Jeff Skinner, who is over a point per game too, Darlene's over a point per game, Tuck is over a point per game, Cousins, point per game guy. Something's been going on in Buffalo, and it's really, really good. We've been saying for years, oh, this is time. You know, it's time for the Sabres to turn things around. I made a video back in 2017 saying how with Middlestad and Darlene, things are going to turn around quickly for the Buffalo Sabres. But like, no, they didn't turn around quickly, let alone turn around at all. The Buffalo Sabres were in such a bad spot for years that seeing where things are today where Dylan Cousins is finally on the team, he's taken the chains of being a 30-40 point guy and just ripped them off of his arms, and he is now a point-per-game stud that is as effective at producing as he was in the Junior League. I'm starting to think that this is a guy that probably should have been taken exactly where he had been taken. And I feel like maybe, you know, there's a lot of people that liked the Dylan Cousins pick at 7. I just kind of was more privy to Caulfield. Like, just my personal preference, right? I like the NTDP guys a lot more than the WHL guys. I liked Krebs, I liked Doc, I liked Cousins. It's just the NTDP guys I felt had a little bit more projectability and short-term NHL success, which is a very fair assessment to make with hindsight, I feel. But, hey... Buffalo's got themselves a really good one, and I feel like for Jack Quinn, it was more like proving everyone wrong, but for Cousins, I feel like it's proving me wrong, you know? I'm gonna go out there and not title this video the same way we did with Jack Quinn. I'm gonna title this video saying that I was wrong about Dylan Cousins because I didn't think he'd be this good this quickly. Maybe we should have seen this coming. He was so good at the World Juniors and the international tournaments that probably it was a good bet to make that he would be this good this quickly, but... Knowing myself, I wouldn't have believed it until I would have seen it, and now we're seeing it, and now I'm believing it. So, yeah, Dylan Cousins is really good, everybody. Talk to the comments your thoughts about this player, his overall progression, how he's gone from Yukon to Buffalo. He was a kid playing against older guys when he was a preteen because he was so good at hockey. And now he's in the National Hockey League tearing things up. Thoughts in the comment section below about Dylan Cousins. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99. And bye.